This time on Monkey Life. Drama at the hospital with Marmoset James. Whoa, have you seen these lungs? What the hell's going on in his chest? It's factor 15 for the Stumpies. The, yeah, I know. I'm horrible, aren't I? And a life-changing decision at the Orang Nursery. One of the first times ever that we've sent an orangutan away from the park. Monkey World, tucked deep in the English countryside, is the largest sanctuary of its kind on the planet. The team, led by Dr. Alison Cronin, rescue and rehabilitate abused and unwanted primates from all over the world. She's up and alert and she looks brilliant, so fantastic job done by everybody. The park provides a home for more than 240 monkeys and apes, and the aim is to give them as natural a life as possible. It's a glorious summer's day at the park, and all the primates are chilling out in the sunshine. Except for the nursery orangs, who are waiting indoors while James prepares a special summer delight for everyone. Most of the orangutans in the nursery are under eight years old. They'll stay here until they mature, but one day they will all move on to join an adult group. Until then, life is undemanding, without too much pressure from grown-ups. Just got some coloured boards um, filled up with um, different various fruit juices and stuff and we've put that in the freezer overnight so it's nice and frozen just to give them a bit of enrichment because the weather um, for once this year is actually really, really nice weather. Um, it's supposed to be really hot today so they should enjoy a bit of refreshment from these first thing this morning. The iced balls are being hung up all around the enclosure just to give all the group a sporting chance to get their own. Better still, big girl Oshin is being kept back for a while. When it does come to nice treats, Oshin does tend to hoard a lot of the food. Um, the kids do tend to keep their distance, stay away from her quite a lot, um, and she'll just grab as much as she can and go and sit in a corner with it. Um, so, yeah, we try and limit that as much as possible. It's like a fun house, isn't it? OK, we're all set. As soon as the doors open, the youngsters rush out to get their treats, led by Dinda with curious Linga hot on her heels. Xiao Ning's in a tearing hurry to grab an icy delicacy. Jolie tries a more studied approach, without much luck. They're having to work to find the fruity ices. A lot of them are fake ones, so they really have to go through all of the bores to get the right ones to get the treats inside. Um, so they're all concentrating out there at the moment, as you can see, um, and generally just enjoying themselves. Jolie's finally bagged herself a treat. And it looks like Kai's taken a leaf out of O'Sheen's book, making a complete pig of himself. Finally, O'Sheen makes an entrance with her sidekick, Sylvester. And they soon make up for lost time. Sylvester's not going to be fooled by the duds. And when O'Sheen grabs a strawberry flavour, she's in seventh heaven. When Kai first moved into the nursery earlier this year, O'Sheen was very wary of him. But since then, they've become the best of pals. Kai's brought O'Sheen out of her shell completely since he arrived in the nursery. They just spend quite a lot of the days playing together now. With her newfound confidence and trimmer figure, she's even trying a few acrobatics. We're seeing O'Sheen actually hanging upside down by her feet, um, and those play sessions will continue to lose that weight off of her, so he's done immensely well for O'Sheen. The ice hunt keeps the troop active and amused for hours. It's a big mess to clean up later on, but all the better for it, because I know that these guys have all had plenty of fun throughout the day. 
but the group are unaware of a massive change about to occur for one of the family. Xiaoning has reached an age where she should move out of the nursery into an adult group. And for the last year, the team have been trying to integrate her, but it's been a struggle. Here at the park, our adult groups are big and they're full of formidable, grown-up adult ladies and men who have very serious opinion. It's not an easy place in those two adult groups. So Xiaoning having a quiet, young, small group is her best future, and so that's what we're going to do for her. As part of the European Endangered Species Breeding Programme, Xiaoning is moving to a new centre in Rostock, Germany, where they have a young male orang waiting for a mate. But it'll be a big step for her, and a huge wrench for the team. One of the first times ever that we've sent an orangutan away from the park, and we've actually found a really good home for Xiaoning in a place that can offer more than we can at present. So that's a very young and small group of her own. So she'll be with a young male her own age and with one other female her own age, and that's it. Since she was born at the park nine years ago, Xiaoning's endeared herself to everyone who knows her, and it'll be hard to say goodbye. I'm going to be really, really sad to lose Xiaoning. Um, I mean, she is a real personality and a great character in this group, and worked with her for quite a few years now. But all the same, she'll be a lot happier when she does finally meet the other guys over in Germany. It is sort of like the kid leaving home for the first time. It's really sad and emotional, but I'm sort of excited and pleased for her because I think she's going to have a really good opportunity. At the Marmoset house, new arrival James is being secured in his nesting box by Jeremy and the team. He needs to be transported to the park's hospital for medical investigations. Like most of the rescued marmosets, James came to the park with no health records. But over the last few weeks, care staff have noticed he has a problem whenever he eats a meal. He vomits up everything he eats to a certain degree. So even if it's banana, we've even seen him bounce water. Um, so he'll be eating happily, very well, feeling good in himself, eating, eating, eating and then up comes regurgitated food, which he often eats back down again and continues on. They need to find out what's causing the trouble. Is there a blockage somewhere down his esophagus where the food sort of hits and then comes back up? Is it a behavioral thing that he's always sort of regurgitated his food? Doesn't really look like that to me, but basically, we don't know. Today, specialist wildlife vet John Lewis is at the park to try and get some answers. We just need to eliminate certain things. Um, we'll x-ray him, or we'll run a blood profile, and I'll have a look with a small modified endoscope <laughs> into his stomach. So there's always the possibility he's got a lump stuck in his stomach, in which case we'll try and remove it. It's a straightforward procedure, but James will need an anaesthetic, and that's a risk for all primates. With male common marmosets weighing less than 500 grams, any operation is even more difficult. We're going to give him an injectable anaesthetic so that he doesn't need to be connected to the gas. We'll have the gas ready just in case um, and see how far we get. It's going to be a fiddle. Jeremy is monitoring James and suddenly there's a problem. He's not breathing, John. John, he's not breathing. It's a life and death situation for James. John can hear a heartbeat, but James is not breathing for himself. John begins gentle chest compressions. They must be hard enough to get air into his lungs, but with such a tiny primate, he could easily break the ribs. Right now, it's just very stressful and terrifying because We've gone to extra lengths to try and sort out James and his welfare, and you know he's actually sorted out with Max now, and now we've got serious problems. Um, and I hope we're gonna be able to A, solve his medical condition, because he clearly has something the matter, and B, that he's even gonna make it through this procedure right now, because quite frankly, it's a bit ropey.
for. At the Parks Hospital, it's a life-threatening situation for Marmoset James. He's reacted badly to anaesthetic and has stopped breathing for himself. The team can only watch anxiously as John works on him. Right now we're having to breathe for him. Um, we'll get him back to baseline and then John will continue on with just gas and air, which is much safer. By reversing the anaesthetic, John is hoping James's condition will improve. He's quite stick now, 103. I mean, he's fine, we just need to get him absolutely stable. Mm. There's a sigh of relief as James starts breathing for himself. Now John needs to work quickly to get to the bottom of James's eating problem. A blood sample will be sent off for analysis. Yes, he seems to have a very large loop of bowel there. But the physical check of James's abdomen is inconclusive, so John decides to X-ray. And the result is alarming. Wow, have you seen these lungs? What the hell's going on in his chest? The X-rays have shocked John. The edge of the heart is rather irregular, and if you look, there's very little dark tissue where there ought to be normal lung, but there's a lot of this irregular, fluffy stuff. And these pale, irregular areas are all abnormal. They shouldn't be there. But I just want someone who knows a lot more about X-rays to give me their comment on that. John now needs to get a good look at James's throat and stomach. The SpO2 has gone right down to 83, but whether that's... Ideally, the endoscope should be flexible. In other words, you can guide it around corners and turn it into different little squiddly bits of the anatomy of the animal. This one's rigid, it's straight. So you have to line everything up. It'll only go in one direction. I'm looking at the esophagus. Mm -hmm. So we're just trying to gently push it down the esophagus um, to get into the stomach without causing any damage. James's persistent vomiting seems to have caused some harm. The top of the, well, the, the ventral floor of the pharynx is quite red. Certainly the upper part of the esophagus is inflamed. Now he's vomiting a lot, and if you bring up a lot of gastric acid, the acid itself inflames the esophagus. Um, so that's not good or comfortable. There are also little white spots on the surface of the esophagus at the top. And that could be a fungal infection. So we've taken some samples to see if that's the case or not. It's vital they find out what's causing the trouble. I want the bacteriology results. I want the blood results. And I want to actually discuss the x-ray with people who are more experienced with x-rays. I don't claim to be an expert radiologist, but I'd welcome their opinions. Hello, young man. Hello. He's a good boy. James is waking up, but the team will have to wait for a diagnosis. Sometimes you don't get all your answers in one go, and sometimes you have to take it step by logical step. And um, as long as we don't miss anything on the way, we'll eventually get to the result. At the Stumpy House, care staff are preparing the way for a special scatter feed for the park's stump-tailed macaques. We've got lots of browse here and it's all got like lots of nice buds and stuff on the end of it. Um, so hopefully this will give them a little bit of enrichment so that they can um, chew on the end of it and um, have fun foraging through it as well. High rankers Sam and Miriam watch on as food is sprinkled through the branches. They're really good foragers, so any small things that we can give them to get them foraging around in the bits and pieces um, is really good for them. Um, so I'm just trying to get this within the middle of the brow, so they really have to get in there. In the wild, stump-tailed macaques are primarily fruit eaters, although they do also feed on seeds, leaves and roots. They originate from the tropical forests of China and Southeast Asia, where they spend most of their time on the ground, often travelling along the banks of rivers and occasionally feeding in trees. Miriam is first off the mark for the scatter feed today, with dominant male Sam close behind her. 
you normally see them like shoving food in really, really fast. Um, they're not eating all this um, food at that speed. Um, basically, they've got really big cheek pouches um, on either side of their face, and they can store a whole load of food in these pouches. You can normally see the pouches grow in size um, as they put more and more in it. Um, and then that means that they can go off, sit down nice and quietly and calmly, and gradually eat the food that they've got in their pouches um, over a period of time. Charlie's using her cheek pouches to the full. And Jonathan is making the most of the lower branches. He's kind of got stuck in and is chewing on all the buds on the end of the brows, which is really great to see. That's exactly what we wanted them to do. He's actually played it quite sensible and is just um, quietly munching away on all the buds, which the others obviously haven't noticed yet. But Phil and Paddy are at the bottom of the pecking order and are waiting their turn outside. Hopefully, um, once the dominant guys have kind of explored everything, had a good look, these low-ranking guys will eventually come in. Um, and we're going to leave it in here for quite a while, so they will have plenty of time to come in and explore. And when it's quietened down, that will be the time that they should come in and have a look. All the park's stumpies were rescued from British laboratories. 19 primates arrived in 2000 after being used for medical research into asthma. Roll it. I roll it. Yeah. And in 2010, 10 more came from a lab in Scotland where the oldest had been living for 20 years. Some had been kept alone in small cages with little chance to move around freely, so they were grossly overweight and many had mobility problems. Many of their coats were in poor condition, with bald patches on some of them that still haven't regrown. And that's a real problem now they're able to sit outside in the sunshine. Jonathan! Paddy! Look, Johnson Grapes! Hannah's keen to get them close to the fence, but not just for the food. Paddy's coming over, so fingers crossed. Good boy. She's not spraying the stumpies to cool them down. We put suntan lotion on them because uh, the lower ranking guys, especially Phil, Paddy and Jonathan, have got bald patches on them. With the sun being so hot and very bright today, um, there is a real possibility that they could get burnt and we really don't want that. Um, sunburn's horrible when you have it, it's really uncomfortable um, and they're grumpy enough already, to be honest. <laughs> they don't need any more reasons to be any more bad tempered. But Paddy doesn't always know what's good for him. Alison and the team have made the momentous decision to allow Xiaoning to travel out to live in a zoo in Germany. The move will help the European breeding programme, but it could be a frightening experience for her, so they're doing all they can to make it easier. We're doing training sessions daily to try and get her used to the box so that when we have to take her on the long drive to Germany, she'll be used to being in here and it'll, it'll be her home for those long hours. <laughs> To minimise stress for Xiaoning, the whole group takes part in crate training. It's no problem for most of them, and Confident lingers eager to get started. But Xiaoning's holding back. Xiaoning is a little bit different to the other orangutans. Doesn't like change very much. Um, just takes things a, a little longer to get associated with anything new. So, yeah, she's a sensitive little thing. Whilst Kai, Linga and Jolie go straight into the crate, Xiaoning heads off up the tunnel in the opposite direction. You gonna come and take an interest in the box? Not on your life, but Jolie has no such qualms. I think even if Xiaoning just watches the others going in and out, I think that's something she can learn from. She can see that it's not that bad and that they're not gonna be stuck in there and, and trapped in there for a long period of time. She will eventually have to go in on her own, but it's going to be a slow process. You can see she's, she's standing to the back and she's just looking ahead. She wants to come, but it just takes her a bit longer than the others. She's, she's less brave. 
Lingaloom. Come here. Lewis's box of treats tempt her a bit nearer to the crate. Good girl, Xiaomi. Right, we're going to push you just a little bit more. We're going to just move over. And every step closer earns a click and a reward. Good girl. But that's as far as she's prepared to go today. It doesn't matter that Shining hasn't come into the crate today. Um, she has made progress by coming up to the tunnel, so she's getting there. Um, we've got a, a decent amount of time to, to work on this. <laughs> so, um, obviously, she's not quite as keen as everybody else. <laughs> With a month to go, she's still got plenty of time to get it right. Next time on Monkey Life, a new leader for the woolly monkeys. He's a big, beautiful male woolly monkey and all of the ladies should love him. And as one arrives, the park says goodbye to an old favourite. Safe journey, guys. Thank you. Let me know how you get on. <laughs> <laughs>